Welcome, welcome, welcome to Real Perspectives TV. Guys, I hope that you are ready for an absolute treat tonight. As we have been talking about for the last couple of weeks, tonight our topic is men only want sex and women give it up fact or fiction. So I know there's going to be a lot of things that you guys want to talk about tonight. So listen, we are here. We are ready. This topic is, is one of those things, guys, that came up as a result of lots of things that have been happening uh, out in cyberspace. So I'm going to actually, uh, I want to first introduce my co-host, Mr. Mario Brown, who is the founder of Empowerment for Life. So Mario, you got to wave for our people. Let them know. Let them know who you are. Hello, everybody. How are you? I am excited. Thank you, Latanya, so very much. So glad to be here. Um, these Tuesday nights are so exciting to me, and I am here for it. I promise you, I am here for it tonight for real. Okay, so y'all, let me tell y'all why Mario is talking about he's here for it. This, The topic of this show actually came as a result of an article he found. So any, any of you guys who, if you don't know Mario, let me tell you, he is the research king. He is one of these people that is an information sponge, okay? He is an information sponge. So Mario saw this topic, we looked at it, and man, I, I, I just can't even say anything else. Mario, I, I'm going to turn it over to you very quickly so that you can kind of tell our viewers how this topic came about. What's on your, um, of course, like you said, I do a bunch, a bunch of research, and I came across this article, and uh, the name of the article um, was Men Only Want Sex and Their Freedom. And so, you know, you and I always talk about a lot of deep stuff. So I said, you know, let me send this to Natanya, and let's see what we can develop from this. Because when I read the article, the first thing that stood out was that this was coming from a professional. Um, in fact, she is a PTSD specialist, military specialist. Mm -hmm. uh, as a matter of fact, this is what she does. Um, and so I thought it was very interesting that uh, she starts off, and can I read this just for a moment? Yes. It's what she starts off saying. Most of the relationship advice you've read or ever taken from a friend is nothing but a load of crap. I'm here to tell you that it's almost always the woman's fault when a relationship ends. He's not sorry that he left and no, he's not coming back. So, you know, immediately I'm like, now I got to read some more of this because this is a licensed professional therapist who counsels military people who have been affected by PTSD and they're having problems in their relationship. He goes on to say this, men do not fear commitment. Men fear being broke and never, never having their penises sucked again. <laughs> That ain't me. <laughs> that ain't me. This, woman. this is on the internet. This is on the internet. Listen, she says, I know that you want to feel some. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Let me, I, I want you to rewind <laughs> that back. You, okay. this, this therapist said, men, what? She said, men do not fear. Being broke. Me, well, I'm sorry. They don't fear, they do not fear commitment. I'm sorry. It then says men fear being broke and never having their penises sucked again. <laughs> Listen, the reason that that's laughable, the reason, you know what? It is easier to get food stamps than for a man to have a problem getting that done. That's why we all falling out laughing. You go to the food stamp office and get some, and you know it's difficult to get some food stamps. But it is, I, she's totally going completely off. Let me say, let, 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 and I gotta go for everything because we gotta go move forward, watch this. She says, all you want is to be loved by one man like a fairy tale, like a fairy tale. She says, women all over this planet want the exact same thing. She says, but here's why most women will never get what they want. 
She said, women universally refuse to accept men as they are DNA designed, which is why most women will never have a successful romantic relationship. Hmm. That's what she said. Number two, because I because I'm on, I want to put it out there and we can go back and address them. Mm -hmm. Women universally refuse to love men on their terms, which is why most romantic relationships eventually fail. She says, I want to help you get what you want. I want you to be happy that Cinderella wants to be you. She said, set aside all of your relationship, relationship killing feminist perspective about men. Focus on what I say and then apply it to your romantic relationships or cuss me out while you stuff another piece of fried chicken in your mouth. <laughs> Back to you, Latanya. I am absolutely uh, stunned. Uh, but before before I really just, just go on in, I, I want to introduce Miyoko Taylor, who really is here with us, guys. You know, Miyoko is an author. He is also a personal development thought leader. And we have asked Miyoko to be here with us this evening, guys, so that he could share the male perspective. So before I go all the way in on this, Miyoko, you are the guest. And you know, it's kind of like when you invite a guest to dinner, you allow them to eat from the table first. So right. I'm going to let you, Miyoko, I'm going to let you respond any way that you see fit to what Mario has read right now. Okay, first of all, I want to say hello to everybody out there. Latanya, Mario, thank you too for having me. Yes, sir, um, man. First of all, ah, where do I begin on this particular topic? For one, when you say men only want sex and freedom, as a man, I am... How do I how do I say I'm very insulted at this particular portrayal of what a man is, because what you described to me is you described an animal. Sex and freedom, if you really look at those particular terms, you look at animals, they procreate and they want to run. They just want to run wild in the wilderness. That is a characteristic of an animal, first of all. So. Any real man will be insulted by that particular statement. Where is the emotional connection? Where is the spiritual connection? What's going to happen if something happens to that particular male physically? What then? What are you going to do then? Is your relationship just completely over? And then she said something that really stuck out as far as uh, loving him on his terms. Let's talk about that for a second. Because... Anybody knows, well, not everybody, but relationships are always a compromise. There's always a balance. There's a give and take. That's just how relationships work. So you, when you say loving somebody on their terms, do you see how selfish and one-sided that is? That relationship is doomed to fail because somebody's needs are, is, are not going to be met. If you're saying on his, uh, his terms, his terms are most likely not going to be yours. So that relationship is going to be lopsided. You are going to be lacking. So what you are doing is you are setting somebody up for failure. You are spreading this germ, as I like to call it, and people are catching this germ. <laughs> and it is turning into a virus, and it is affecting a lot of people, not only just women, but men abroad. And this, real this, this mentality has spread. So th those are my initial thoughts, and I'm sure I have more thoughts as this progresses and it goes along. But what you just described, she described an animal. You mean all the time? The only thing that I want is somebody to go down on me, and I want my own freedom. I mean, think about what she said here, and 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 you that are listening and you're watching, think about what she said. If you are a man and you are watching right now, how does that make you feel? Think about it. Okay, so I, I, I'm going to respond to that real quickly. So, Safir Malik says, man, and I, listen, I'm just going to read these comments as they are written. <laughs> okay, that is Latanya's disclaimer. So, Safir Malik says, man, who the hell care about 
having a penis suck if your money <laughs> ain't your penis. If, <laughs> I, I think he means if your money ain't right, your penis uh-huh. don't get hard anyway. That's what, <laughs> that's, that's the fear Malik's um, input. Uh, some people said, wow. And I think these were in response, Mario, to when you were reading what was, what was, what, you know, the, the substance, at least this initial substance of the article. Uh, Sharon, or it's either Sharon or Sharon says, Lord have mercy. Beverly says, you've got to share more about that article. I read it and from the writer's perspective does not speak well for mature men and women. I agree. Mm -hmm. Uh, And so, yeah. Well, Danielle says, I think the same may go for women too. We were talking about it. There it is. Oh man, here we go. I'm just saying, y'all. There it is. Danielle said. There it is. That's what Danielle said. Now, oh. now let me let me give let me give my take because see, read re, listen. You know, I I gotta get the court reporter to bring this transcript back. You know how I like to do it. So you said she said about women something about you're fooling yourself. Read run that back for me, Mario. All right. Um, what she says is women universally refuse to accept men as they are DNA design, which is why most women will never have a successful romantic relationship. She said women universally refuse to love men on their terms, which is why most romantic relationships eventually fail. She says every woman wants the same thing on the planet, but they refuse to accept men on their terms and to do what is necessary to have that Cinderella-like relationship. Mm-mm-mm. All right, so let me let me let me say this. Let, let, me, say, uh, let me say this. See, here herein lies the problem for me. Two things. First of all, I, I think that whenever you say you you have to love a person on on their terms, that's totally different from from showing a person love in the way that they receive it. Mm-hmm. Because that's two totally different things now. Because again, when you I mean, this, th- what you just read is a transaction. We have terms in a contract. Okay, y'all know I'm all about them contracts. You have terms in a contract. I tell people, read the small print, but you better know about the term. Totally different. We are not talking about transaction. See, that's the problem. I believe that we, we now have made relationships into transactions, right? Mm-hmm. I, I, I'm bringing this to the table. You bring this to the table. And now you give me a little bit of that. I'm going to give you a little bit of this. And I'm only going to go so far with you if I'm going to do this. But but I'm going to tell you, if I were a man, I would be absolutely appalled at what this woman said. Because more so in, in, in line with what Miyoko is saying, you're saying, okay, I want not, listen, not sexual connection. Think about this. You want what she's saying is they want somebody to bow to them in a certain manner, mm-hmm. right? And then we just want we just want to roam free, like an animal. How, cra- how crazy is that? Like an animal. But but here's the thing. Like Miyoko was mentioning about the emotional connection, all those. And listen, guys, it's a lot more to this article than that. This this is so juicy. I don't know if we're going to be able to get to this because it is, it is so <laughs> preposterous to say that every man on the planet, didn't you say she said every man on the planet or every woman on the planet? She said every woman on the planet refuses to love a man according to his DNA makeup. Yeah. And they will, feel, they, will, they will refuse to accept men as they are DNA designed. DNA designed? DNA designed. Right. Y'all it's, heard her? Absolutely. And see, here's the other problem with that old statement. Here's the other problem with that old statement is that she's speaking for the entire planet of women, first of all. Of people, of people, men and women. Absolutely. And she's not a man. And she's speaking on behalf of men everywhere. And what that says is, even like uh, Miyoko said, that this is speaking to us as though we are animals in the wild. That we are animals in the wild. And, but but what's uh. is that people are actually going to subscribe to this. Yes. That's the danger. Yes. That's Listen, the danger. You said, guys, I, for those of you that are just joining, this is a person who is a therapist. My understanding yes. is that she treats 
war, returning war Absolutely. veterans who are already in a very emotional, e emotional, very fragile state. I've never, I've never been to war. I have never been to war. So I'm not going to try to speak to what it is, but I know people who have, I know the things that they go through just to try to reintegrate. And this is the person, this is her mindset. Forget that she's a woman. I don't even care. But this is her, this is her mindset about connecting on a major level. I mean, I, I, well, but know, I'm me, almost at a loss for words, here, Mario. Here's the thing though. Here And, and here's the thing. So what you're saying to me is that the only thing a woman is good for is bowing in front of me, handling her business to satisfy me physically. And then I'm going to go, girl, going about your business. I got, I got now things. I don't let the thing. article say that me, Yoko. Uh, okay. Until next time. Until well, next time. Well, let me, let me, let me read the article. Yeah, because... Shall we continue? Yeah, because he's really on to it, actually, because this is how it started. Let me get a background since someone said read the article. It said a few years ago, this is how she, she decided to write the article. She said, first of all, the choice is yours. You can listen to your friends if you want to. She said, the choice is yours. But y'all better listen to me because I'm about to tell you something. That's what she's saying. She said, three years ago, a Facebook friend was getting married, and she asked me for my best relationship advice regarding men. I told her that all men only care about are these three things, sex, money, and, in, and, and this is in parentheses, uh, the optional thing, which constantly changed and was anything from his golf game, his promotion at work, the price of gas, love, paint chip color cards, his car, where he left his mobile phone, which bathroom stall at work was the best place to take a dump, what those guys were wearing when they signed the Declaration of Independence, who screwed up the lawnmower, et cetera, et cetera. She says, I advise her to give her husband regular blowjobs. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Don't don't say nothing else. Listen, I, I I'm looking I'm look, <laughs> I'm looking at this Facebook feed. There are several married women on here that I know. Now I'm, I'm not telling y'all, don't tell you, don't tell your business, married ladies. But I need for you guys to chime in the comment. Is this woman right? I mean, on, on any level, is, is she right? Now she may not speak directly for you, but some of these women, like I said, I know some of these women on this feed, they have been married for many, many years. Ladies, is this woman right? Is is that the, the only thing that you need to do to make a, make marriages work? Because I mean, some of these people, they've been married 20, 30 years. So I, I just I just need to know, but I'm sorry, Mario, y'all had to stop you right there. I, I, I'm gonna watch these comments. Go ahead, Mario. Now, what else, what, what else is, is, is this uh, therapist saying, please? Okay, the therapist then says, the, ther the professional therapist that are handling our veterans coming back from war says this, I advise her to give her husband regular blowjobs, to never discuss important issues with him right after work or late at night, to give him his freedom and his space and to just leave him alone. She was angry with my advice and she fired back that getting married meant her blowjob days were over and that she wanted companionship and had no intention of ever leaving her husband alone. She says, I told her that if that was the way she chose to relate to her man, her marriage wouldn't last three years. Her response was to unfriend me and block me. December of 2015, she emailed me at my website telling she'd been served divorce papers and that she needed my help. I replied that I'd try to help her, but she refused to see that after 50 something years of terroristic feminist reign, men no longer give a F about staying with women who don't suck their peace <laughs> and who make them feel like prisoners of war. Now I'm going to stop right there because there's so much more, but we got to stop right there and deal with that because here, here's, here's something that's real, real crazy right here. 
is once again, she's literally saying to women that you absolutely have no say so in a relationship with the person right. in which you are involved right. in. You have no say so whatsoever. Right. You, you, and, and this turns into nothing more than idol worship. This yeah. is idol worship. Because what you're saying is bow down to my sexual organ and worship me. And in return, I'm going to do absolutely nothing but let you go about your day until I need you to come back and bow down at the altar of sexual idolatry. What I said, exactly what I said. Do That's what you got to do. All right. I will summon you. I will summon thee later. <laughs> Yeah, so, I mean, I mean, seriously, like, like, I, I don't, I'm very rarely speechless, but this is, this may be one of those times because I'm, I, I don't, I, I'm not even gonna try to, I, I'm not, a, I'm not a therapist. Clearly, she is, but um, it is absurd to think that this is a reality, though. Like, I, I just, I, I can't think of any way that a person really could believe this. Do, now, now, first of all, let me say this. This article was located on LinkedIn, right? LinkedIn, of all LinkedIn, places. Of Absolutely. all places. Absolutely. So guys, this is not your normal Facebook fun article. Right, this right. Is actually LinkedIn. a LinkedIn article. But, but, but listen, so, so, so Mario, Talk a little bit more uh, about that because I think that you that you you've really hit on something. But but I want you, Mario. I know Miyoko has shared it with us. What do you think about this? Just just as a man, let's just take the spiritual aspect out of it. Just as a man, how does this? How does how did reading this make you feel? Well, you know what? Very honestly, I was totally like Miyoko, totally offended that you would think that all men think that way. Number one. And that all men are walking around waiting for someone to get down on their knees and give them a blowjob. I'm, I'm, I'm offended that you think that way about us. What I also think is that this is her history. This is her yes. lifestyle. Yes. This is her behavior. And she's projecting that off onto other women who may be gullible, who may be looking for relationships, who may be desperate in trying to figure out why can I get this man to love? Because at the end of the day, I got to read more of the article. This was actually about love for the woman. She was trying to figure out how to get a man to say he loved her. And this is the advice she got in return. As a man, I would not respect the woman that the minute I walked in the door, she's down on her knees saying, pull it out. I'm not going to respect you. I'm not going to respect you because that's, that's, some, that's some stuff in the street that drug addicts do for their next hit. You're supposed to be my woman in my house. Why in the world would that turn me on? See, I know when we grow up uh, and growing up as boys, let's talk about the, the boy culture for a moment. That always sounds real good when we out in the street and, you know, we trying to be that dude that's like, oh, man, she she gave me some hay, man, yada, 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 yada. First of all, that was a bunch of lies. We were lying. We were lying most of the time. Number two, when you grow up, you're not always there. That's not what you're talking about. When she said we're concerned about money, like Sophia said, when your money bad, get out my pants. When my money ain't working, don't, don't go near me. Don't touch me out there. Do not go in that region because I need some money, cuz trust me. I'm simply saying that this is ludicrous on so many levels with a regular normal person who lives a day-to-day -day life that's not reality. It's not. It's That's not. not reality. She she cl she classifies men as these over hormonal sexual beasts. Like this is all we want. This is the only desire we have. And it goes back to me saying I'm really insulted because she has men as being these one dimensional, basically freaks of nature that just want this one particular thing and then wants to run wild. She talks about no other type of qualities that need to be in a relationship. But the crazy thing about it is this was based on love. And if yeah. you read the article a little further, she, she takes another woman on an assignment. And I think uh, the woman's husband says he loves her based off of something she does with her body. 
bowing on her knees and 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 then the man says i love you after that and she's in tears and she's excited because she's taking this advice from this therapist when in my opinion is the reality of the situation is the only reason why he said i love you is because you have done something that physically pleased me and i want that again wow so so okay let let's let's transition here okay let let let's tra transition here just just really quickly because I want to take a, just a moment just a moment to read some of the comments there there have been quite a lot guys we are not neglecting you but this for me is just so intense I am so so I am just slacking on my job but Safir says a real man does not care about that his focus is on stability and security for his home and family. There's a balance. There's right. a balance. There's definitely Beverly, a balance. Beverly says, what, seriously, Cinderella-like relationship? So again, uh, that's in response to that. So someone, Ira says, reading small print also tells about the side effects. <laughs> now, I like that one. I like that one. Reading and Beverly also says that this woman does not speak for her, both Beverly and Gwendolyn said, and Ira, everybody's saying, listen, she don't speak for me, okay? So other people are saying that's just sad. Mario, tell someone's asking about what is the person's name and the actual mm -hmm. article. So for those of you that want to know the author's name and the title of the actual author, uh, I'm sorry, the actual article, you can go ahead. Mario, tell them tell them about the, the article. Okay, let me um uh, her name is Nanette Leray uh Hernandez. Um, that's Nanette Larie, rather, Hernandez. Um, and it was on LinkedIn. And I will, um, at the end of the show, I'll give all that information. I'll make sure you can type it in to them and they can see that in the link. Okay. Um, what we can do is put that out there and I'll, I'll give the, uh, the, uh, the link where they can go right into the article. Okay, and Beverly says, seems like she's saying more about her life experiences than anyone else's. That's her baggage unique to her. Sister got some banged up luggage <laughs> or on her life journey. <laughs> that is definitely true. Now there's a different Beverly that says you better know how to cook. So I guess she's saying, listen, that you you gotta know some other things than than what this woman is saying. Nina says she's wrong. Now I, I know at least one of the Beverly's and 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 Nina, they've been married long term, right? Like a long, long time in 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 on anybody's level. So I know that. And then uh, Abrielle says she is messed up. Alyssa say, Alisa says, I think that we would have to agree that she's a bit extreme in what she's saying. However, there is some truth to what she says. Alisa, honey, you know you- mm, <laughs> You ignited a fire up in here. Yeah, come on now, here we go, here we go, here we go. Tell her to clarify Listen. that. Listen, I, 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 I uh, uh, Alyssa, you got to come on and and put we we need another comment, uh, Alyssa. Clarify we really, that, Miss Alyssa. We need some clear. We need some clarification. So we gonna move on and get some clarification. So Nina agrees, Mario. I think it was you that said, or one of you was saying, you don't have to marry a woman for that because you can get that anywhere, right? Uh, Benny, we are going to provide that information. I don't know if we're gonna have a link, but we'll have the author's name and we'll definitely have the the title and. Abriel says, my husband says it makes him angry. Now, I don't know what it is, Abriel, but share that in the comment if you're okay with that. And Ebony says, I read the article and the amount of win men and women that agreed with her in the comments was unsettling. Absolutely. Let me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me jump in here because Ebony was also one of the persons that shared that article with me as well. When I saw it, I had seen it, and then she sent it to me because we talk about that kind of stuff. But really, to go further, we really got to go a little bit further because you got to hear what she told the woman to do. Yes. Yes, yeah, you got to hear that. This is what she said. This is what she said. She said, uh, women grenade their own relationships. Women grenade their own relationships. She says, ask any man on earth who has all the power in a relationship and every man will reply the woman. No, who doesn't get that? You know who doesn't get that, she says? 
You women don't understand that. She says, so while you're miserably sobbing into the phone, asking your girlfriends what you've done wrong and, and asphyxiating yourself on haagen ice cream, you've completely negated to see that the entire solution to your problems is right on your face. And <laughs> your that's what she said now. That's, that's what she said. That's, that's the thing she said, y'all. Now, 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 here's the thing. Here's the thing. It gets deeper. She said, a man's emotions are directly connected to his penis. She said, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. no way. Yeah. Miyoko, 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 listen to this chick. She says, men feel loved when their penises get wet. Every time you ignore your man sexually, you're killing his emotions for you. Wow. The fact that so many women refuse to respect how men need to be loved is exactly why your man leaves you. Wow. Now let me just go say this while I got the mic. Um, I will not negate, neglect, or even minimize the pleasure from that act but trust me, it don't pay no bills. It does not make me love you anymore. It doesn't do anything for me in that except give me the moment of pleasure. That's for all men. It is a momentary act of pleasure. There's no love in it. There's no, it has nothing to do with love. See, we grew up hearing all that stuff about, well, if you love me, you'll let me do this. You'll let me do that. I remember this little girl that we would always, every dude on our, on our block wanted, all right? And the thing that we would do when we were trying to have sex was say, well, you know, I love you, so at least let me put the head in. That was the term of negotiation. See, that was stupid. That means then that's a childlike belief and a childlike adolescent behavior that you can that you will connect that to love. Now, for the for the person who feels like, well, yeah, I believe that you got to give your man gray head so he'll stay at home. Well, then talk to the millions of women who, who are giving them the best head. I'm talking about super head. I'm talking about Kareem Stefan's super head. And their men still left them and have abandoned them for the woman who said, I ain't even going to do that. I'm not going to do it. And he loves her. Answer that one. Uh, what's her name? Uh, Miss Hernandez. We may have to have well, her on for a follow up. <laughs> well, see, well, see, here's the thing. And, and I, I, I'm not coming to her defense at all. I am definitely not doing that. But I want to look at this from another perspective. We have no idea what she's encountered in her life, why her mindset is even this way. And to me, it really seems like this has been her experience in her relationships. Like she's dealt with some very aggressive men who have gotten her to this period where, you know, she has been broken down to this thought process and this mindset. And I think, uh, Mario, when we were talking, you know, off uh, off camera, you were talking about a doctrine because that's really what it is. I mean, she is like carrying this message to all types of men and women. I mean, on but on LinkedIn, though, LinkedIn. Right. So, okay, okay. Let's transition for a bit back to these comments, guys, because remember, we did ask Elisa for some. Let's do it. Let's do it. Yes. So, listen, I don't want y'all to cut Elisa off when she when she dropped this knowledge on y'all. Okay. Okay. Come on. Drop it. <laughs> okay. So the first the first thing, and 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 I'm gonna get to as many of these as possible because listen, my stomach is hurting from laughing, guys. But okay, so. Alisa says, women say, women say all the time, the same thing it took to get me, he must keep me. So wine and dining, you know, whatever you did to, to get with me, you need to keep doing it. That I agree with. Men also have sexual expectations. I think we can agree with that. Okay. However, we can't debase a man's need to something as simple as a blowjob. I think we all agree with that. Yes. Because I think that's in line uh, with with uh, with what everyone is saying here, Danielle says that belief system is why so many relationships fail. Mm -hmm. The Yuri, I think it's the Yuri, says females who are loose and sexually relaxed feel like this. Mm -hmm. They don't offer anything but sex. So mm -hmm. Beverly says 
What happens if the wife becomes seriously, physically ill and cannot perform? True love and commitment is far deeper than only the physical. It's a spiritual covenant between the man and the woman. Now we're going to get into that in the next half, right, Mario? Uh, absolutely. absolutely. Okay. So, so now back to Alisa. Alisa said, listen, y'all. Now she said, listen, y'all. I y'all uh -huh. know I say that, but we listening. Alisa said, listen, y'all, as a woman, <laughs> I'm sorry. As a woman, if my man started out performing oral and he stopped when I got married, I would have an issue. Okay. Definitely. Well, see, here's here's the thing. Here, here's but the we got a few more comments, so y'all better go and get it in while I'm at this pause. Well, well, here's the thing. It whatever you do in your bedroom is your business. I mean, if 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 you understand certain particular things are going to please you in certain ways, then that's between you and your partner. We're not we're not talking about that. We're talking about somebody that says you have to necessarily do these things for a man to love you. Right. That's the big issue at hand here. We're not talking about just um, if a man started out doing this and, and, and he stopped. We're not talking about that at all. Absolutely. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about this woman saying this is what love is. This is a major problem. Right. A major problem. Yeah. Yeah. yeah absolutely. A absolutely. And, and again, wait. OK, so uh, Elisa says. Uh, now, I do think what she is saying is extreme because there is so much more depth to a man than what she is saying. Men need balance. They need their emotional, spiritual and physical needs met. I think we can agree with that. Right. So fear says, damn, she's smoking some good dope. <laughs> 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 I'm just saying, I'll listen. Do not attribute these comments to me, guys. They are in the comment section. I am reading them. So Abriel says she, so, so is she seriously saying, Mario, I'm going to direct this question to you because you are our designated article person. Okay. So is she seriously saying that oral copu copulation is the solution to love and relationships? Wow. She has serious issues. Is that what she's saying? That, that, that is exactly what she's saying. And if I can read further, I can prove that point. All right. She says, a woman emailed me that her U.S. Marine husband had done several tours in Iraq and that he'd come home so angry after his last deployment, he would scream at her and call her a liar every time she told him that she loved him. I reminded her that many servicemen and women come back from the war angry and full of self-doubt and that PTSD was an accelerant on their raw emotions. I told her a man in his emotional state could not believe the words, I love you. I was unsure how to advise her because her problem was truly awful. However, after a few days of thinking, I came up with an idea I believe would work since I understand how men's brains are wired and how PTSD rewires the brain. I emailed her and told her to stop telling her husband, that she loved him. I explained that most men do not believe in words. They only believe in actions. And that her husband was so wound up tightly that PTSD, uh, with PTSD, that every time she used the word love, it was like throwing firecrackers into his brain. I told her that she needed to go an entire 31 days straight without once telling her husband that she loved him. Instead, she needed to show him that she loved him, and I emailed her a list on ways she could show him. I then told her to contact me for the next step. Once she'd gone a full 31 days with no words of love, only action. It was about three months before I finally made it, she finally made it rather, a full 31 days without telling her husband one single time that she loved him. For the next step, I asked her to pick a weeknight and she picked Wednesday after midnight. I then told her that every Wednesday after midnight for the following six weeks, she needed to give her husband head until he came. She said she would try. So I sent her my book, Creative Screwing. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm starting to believe I can't hold that, bro. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm going to 
gonna let that soak in. I'm gonna let that soak in. I, I'm gonna let that soak in. Oh man. Gonna let that soak All right. In. Here we go. This I says, am gonna let that this soak this in. Says, and then told her not to contact me for the third step until she had gone six solid weeks giving her husband head every Wednesday after midnight. Two months went by and she emailed me again. She actually sounded happy. Uh, she said Wednesday was the one day a week that her husband made all kinds of efforts to rein things in and that she was shocked at how modified his behavior became. I told her it was because he knew Wednesday was blowjob day and he didn't want to screw that up. I then gave her the third step, stating that on Wednesday, she was now going to wear sexy lingerie, put on red lipstick, sit, in her, sit her husband in a chair, and turn on a small lamp so that she'd be on her knees and he could watch her while she was getting him off. I told her to do that for four weeks straight and then call me for the final step. Y'all, the, the mics did not go off. It is good. <laughs> okay, so we are absolutely so basically Miyoko, Miyoko, can you take this one? I so, I'm, so, I'm so so basically you are well versed and well instructed in how to train a dog. Basically. Um uh low job Wednesday. So his his demeanor just completely changes on this particular day because he knows it's that particular time of day, the day of the week. Yeah, all you did was train an animal. Yeah. So it kind of goes along with what she's been saying. She knows how to train animals. And there are some men, as well as women, that have a very animalistic nature. So I can see how this could be effective for those particular types of people. But a real complete woman, a real complete man, beautiful inside as well as out, intelligent, strong, compassionate, uh, empathetic, spiritual, all these particular things, you're not even cracking the tip of the iceberg. Absolutely. You're talking about that because that is all physical. That has nothing to do with touching me here and touching me here. Which right. let, me, let, me, let me jump in and say right there, Miyoko, you're so right. Because here's the thing, because once that's over, there is absolutely no connection afterwards. Zero. You know, I don't I don't want to hear from you. I don't want you to talk. But you got to hear the rest of this piece because we got to bring this all together. She said this and this see, because I know what's happening right now. From my years of counseling, I can tell you right now that some people are taking notes because they're absolutely desperate to hear those words, I love you. And so they have already tried everything else. They prayed, they fasted, they've done whatever, and they still can't hear it. So they're saying, okay, well, why not try this? Uh, but it's deeper. Listen to what she said. When she called me for the final step, I told her, Cara, this Wednesday, when you do your blowjob routine, right as he's getting ready to come, you're going to tell your husband, I love you. After he comes, I want you to kiss him all the way from his balls to his neck. And then I want you to leave the room so that he can be alone. Then I want you to call me and tell me what happens afterwards. That Thursday night, she called and told me that her husband had gone to Walmart and bought her a bicycle. <laughs> yeah, go and take that in. Take that in. Not flowers, not, not, a, not a tennis bracelet, not a washing machine. Not, not a car. A, 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 a straight up bicycle from Walmart. Watch this. When she asked him, why he done that, he told her that he was concerned about her health because she never exercised. And he didn't want her to die because he loved her. He didn't want to miss Blowjob Wednesday. <laughs> right, right. He says, he says, she started crying on the phone as she was telling me this. 
Her husband had not told her that he loved her in four years. She says, if you refuse to hear what I'm saying, you will never have a romantic relationship that you want with a man, period. Okay. Let's stop. Let, let's let's stop right there. Let's stop right there for just a second. I'm going to get to these comments. <laughs> and we're going to pick that back up. How about that? Because this is fun. Okay, so Sayuri so says, as a retired exotic dancer, now, of course, these some of these comments go all the way back, but she says, as a, as a retired exotic dancer, I understand that everything about men is not sexually based. Men are human beings with emotional needs, and they are not connected to sex okay Sharon says it's all about the relationship between couples some men and women don't partake in going down and a relationship is based on more than just sex sex is important but what about trust loyalty spiritual connection finance and most importantly is that is that who God has for you what happens when the mouth won't work broken jaw illness etc he is going to leave or get someone else to go down on him question mark the foundation of relationships should not be built on sex. So Yuri says, men look for women to marry, all caps, who can who who can build with and raise their children. Hoes are having sex and children are just a byproduct. Then they expect mm -hmm. men to morph into a husband. They attribute their ability to make them feel good that the man should love her because of the euphoria. So I think, Mario, that was something close to what. Very, very good comment. Very yeah. good comment. Alisa says, I was engaged when I was young and there was another woman older pursuing him who did all the things I didn't. Well, he chose her. His reasoning, she gave him blowjobs. Some men may not be that shallow, but some are. Men that aren't in touch with themselves and haven't, haven't done the work can be that simple. We must understand that many people's definition of love is distorted. Do we need to, we want to stop right there. Yes. But see, here's the, here's the yes. thing. They keep, I hear these comments and they keep saying men, but a real man is not going to react that way. This is what I'm saying. The complete man, the complete woman, someone that is very well-rounded. You're saying that you weren't doing all these particular things for uh, this particular boyfriend at the time. And then he left and he went with somebody that was doing those things because that was what what was important to him. Right. He had an animalistic nature. Absolutely. He went yeah. go sniffing around another she dog. Yeah, absolutely, man. And, and you know what else? We got to go right back to what Danielle said at the top of the top of the, um, the hour. Danielle said, but some women are like that. Some women yes. feel that way. And see, that's the piece we got to put in here because there is a scapegoat syndrome going on where this is centered just around men. Men are scapegoats because let me help you. The truth of the matter is, is that there must be a willing mouth for him to put his penis in. He right. is just not forcing that in that mouth. There are some women who believe that there's so much power in that, that they have, they have been relegated to be those women that love that position and believe that they carry some power. They believe that that is absolutely the truth. That is why some men would say, I'm going to leave you because you won't do it. But guess what? They're not going to stay with the one who does it for very no, long. They no. not the person. Because as Miyoko said, that's their nature. And so what you're really saying is if you're hurt because he left you because you wouldn't do that, then you got to really understand that that's because he didn't recognize that you were greater than that and that you didn't need that. That's who he is. And so what we got now, Danielle said it clearly. There are women out here that will call and insist. I, listen, being a counselor, I can tell you this. I know women who would not let a man have intercourse with her, but she will blow him because she can't even have an orgasm unless she has a penis in her mouth. And so she has somehow been taught, educated, trained in the words of Miyoko. She's been trained to believe that the power is not just between your legs, but it's in your mouth. So this, this is why now we're going we're gonna to get to the spiritual piece in this. But watch this. There are people that believe that the Bible says that the power of life and death is in your tongue. No. They no. are saying this now. I have sat across and counseled women who believe that that has something to do with something sexual. That's how perverted the thinking is, man. Wow. 
So this is why I'm saying that that we must we cannot deal with the man without dealing with the woman who feels that that's her power base. Because back in the day, that's what that was the biggest thing when uh, Stefan Kareem uh, Kareem Stefan came out superhead. Every woman was going to buy that porn video to see how this woman was giving head. And they began to try to emulate the process because they saw what Mr. Marcus did when she did it to him. And so now they still, now they educate other women. Girl, this is how you do this. This is what you do. And because I'm a pastor, that stuff going on right in the house of God. In the house of God, holy blowjobs. That's where it's going down. But, but you know what? Just, just a couple of things. So for, for me, I, I feel like this. The reason, again, y'all might beat me up for this, but the reason that I think that the focus is more on men. So, I mean, we can, we can crack out the Bible. We can talk about a lot of things. We can talk about what, what happens in the church. But I think that on some levels, there is an innate need for a woman to please a man. I just believe that. I think that there's an, an innate need. Now, I'm not talking about every man. I'm not talking about any man. But any woman that loves a man wants to please him. I'm not saying that men don't feel the same way. But I'm saying in, in general. But what happens is if a woman feels like she is inadequate and she is not pleasing her man, she will seek help. And unfortunately, sometimes you get stuff like this because you get desperate. So you just like, well, shoot, I just want to I just want to find out something that works because I want to keep this particular man. Now, mm. rightly or wrongly, it happens lot. It happens lots of times. Now, on on the flip side, and I think what some of the comments are saying as well, and like what you guys are saying, yeah, you have some women that pretty much think the same way. You know, you have some women that say, "Well, listen, this is all I need for you to for you to do for me." If that's what works for you, fine. I just think that at, that at the end of the day, a, as a human. You desire a an emotional connection. I think that this article is devoid of that, and it Absolutely. almost it almost says like someone in the comments mentioned this is one of those Pavlov dogs kind of thing. That was that's the Wednesday. It's the Pavlov dog. Like, hey, this is the day. Of course, you excited. You know, you ain't getting it but once a week if it's something you like. You know what I mean? So you're gonna yeah. want it. And you're going to do the things that you feel that you need to do. Now, I don't know where the bike came in at. Now, I don't, I don't really understand the, the bike situation. But what I'm saying is, I think as, as, a, as a woman, <laughs> the, sad part, the sad part about what's, what's happening is the fact that this person is lumping all men into a certain category and all women into a certain category. Do I believe that there are people in this world that believe just that and this is what they do? Absolutely. But do I believe that that's a long-term solution to this person's problem? No. It could be that the reason her husband wasn't saying he loved her is because that's something he never learned growing up. It may have nothing to do Absolutely. with Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? So I mean, you're, touch saying? you're touching on something that I was, you were reading my mind, Latanya. You're reading my mind because I was thinking one of the biggest issues before you can even love someone else properly, you have to love yourself first. And people, people leave that particular point out. So you can't look to a male or a female to validate who you are. And I think oftentimes in a lot of relationships, if I don't do this, then he will think this. If I don't do this, he will think that. Well, what about what you think about yourself? Uh, I think we had a particular... Uh, comment that said he left because she wouldn't do all these things and I guess she kind of felt bad well you know what you should actually hang your head up high because you you want to have a certain level of your own self-worth and your own value and if a person can't respect that they're no good for you anyway so you want somebody that's going to meet you at that balance you don't want anything to validate you these sexual acts are things that they feel validate them and say, oh, he really loves me because I'm doing these things and I'm doing whatever I can to please him. You're a slave. Absolutely. That's what you are. You are a slave. And he is your master. That's well, right. listen, now, somebody into the whole slave and master role play. Now, we ain't going to knock them. We're not talking that. about that. <laughs> You're talking about let the me. reality of life. But, but Tanya, let me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me say this real quick. Um, Felicia Smith made a powerful comment 
I, I was you you stole my thunder. You stole my thunder. <laughs> read Felicia's comment. Okay, okay, go, go, ahead, go ahead. You go ahead. Okay, Felicia said that well, sometimes women put more pressure on men to do what they are not ready to do when the man doesn't commit their way uh, to, to their way, then they dog him out. Now, see, that, that's a heavy statement because I can tell you right now, if a man tells the typical female who has no problem doing that, well, no, I don't want you to do that. That's, that's okay, you know what I'm saying? No, I'm not really into that. Then she's going to say he's a punk. He's a punk. You mean to tell me you don't like no good now, hair? Now you you what's the what's the art? Now you acting like therapist Hernandez. Y'all are generalizing around here. Let but but to that point, look, I want to read Sharon's comment because it's it's what you're saying. Sharon says, My husband into, isn't into blowjobs or oral sex. On the other hand, he loves to take control completely, and he is a wonderful man, husband, father, and provider. So uh, again. This really runs, runs the gamut. And as our time kind of winds down, I want to just read a couple of these. And then I want to get some, some last minute comments. Uh, Beverly also says, Be Beverly says, yes, this is a topic that needs to be addressed across gender lines. So we gonna, that means, uh, Mario, we got to bring it back. Absolutely. Okay, Absolutely. so guys, for those of you that are here, we're going to bring it back at some point. It ain't going to be next week, but we're going to bring it back. <laughs> we already got something scheduled for next week. Um, so Yuri says hoes and tricks find each other men and women find each other okay she says I'm not surprised by the holy blowjobs hashtag church thoughts <laughs> the most judgmental and low down <laughs> behind closed doors girl you better register that trademark cause somebody gonna be using it. hashtag church thoughts oh my god yep. so Yuri get the high five for the night cause let me tell you yeah she has laid it down, no holes barred. I love it. I love it. John says, you love yourself when you work to become the best you can become and not become a slave to your feelings and that that which you know is wrong. Uh, Ophelia says, if it's the way because the family foundation has, oh, it's this way because the family foundation has been destroyed. We need to keep mm. our mind right and be there to teach our children these things so that we can end this cycle. That is very, very awesome. good. So Yuri very says good. that is witchcraft. Literally. She said, literally, <laughs> this is witchcraft. And I know we didn't we didn't get to that. And actually, Abriel says that as well. We didn't really get to that. And I know Mario, I mean, we're we're virtually out of time, but we're gonna put that on the list to to discuss the spiritual aspect of it. Guys, listen, we were hoping to have a full discussion on this, but then I kind of knew that yeah. wasn't going to happen once you started reading what this lady was saying. So, yeah. Miyoko, since you're our guest co-host, what are some parting words that you would like to leave with our viewers tonight? The final thoughts is become the best you that you can possibly be. Become the complete man or complete woman. Mm -hmm. That means you want to get your finances straight, you want to be emotionally sound. More importantly, you want to love yourself. Validate you first. Understand your own self-worth before you even get into a relationship. Don't go into a relationship looking to fill a void. And that's what a lot of people do. You should all a relationship should be a bonus. It should be something that adds to you to where both of you can actually grow and then evolve into uh, better, even more. Uh, productive people, but never get into a relationship to fill a void or to validate yourself. And that's my final thought. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much, Miyoko, for, for being our guest. Mario, again, your parting thoughts for the viewers tonight. Well, thank you so much. Thank you so, so, so much. And, and, and Miyoko, absolutely great parting words, man. I think my concern tonight is when we have innocent people who are sitting in the council of the ungodly because we do understand that everybody wants to be loved everybody wants a great relationship mm -hmm. and they want to be fulfilled and I think that what saddens me tonight is that many people um, will listen to this woman because she has reached like thousands of people and they're going to put themselves in very dangerous positions to not only mess themselves up spiritually but they're going to sometimes get messed up physically and emotionally. 
Um, I'm also at the same time very excited to hear that so many people are well-rounded and solid in yes. this. I'm very excited to hear that that married couples are actually sound. They, re they readily understand their position and they're, they're speaking from a place of being whole. That's encouraging. That's encouraging. And we need these conversations. We need these conversations. They need to be just as open, just as raw as they have been tonight, because we can really help some people avoid selling themselves to uh, the perversion, because that's, this is what it comes down to is, you know, selling yourself over out of desperation and then you're left for dead. And so I think that I, I really want to appreciate everybody tonight uh, for coming in. And we've got to come back and do this because we can truly see that there's a need for this type of conversation. Um, and I think that we can start repairing a lot of people who are broken, fragmented, uh, and even hurting other people with a false expectation. So thanks again. Those are my parting words. Awesome. Uh, again, as usual, uh, thank you. Thank you both. I want to say that when, when we think about relationships, especially when you're talking about two becoming one, the only way to get two is to have two holes. You can't have a 0.5 and a 0.5 and make it two. You have to have two whole parts. And I think that that's what we're talking about. You have to first be whole before you can now come together and be a complete couple with another person, if that's your desire. And so again, these are all perspectives. They are real perspectives. And that's why we're bringing that to you in the way that we are. Thank you guys so much for being a part and sharing and really, really sharing and be a, being a part of the Real Perspectives discussion. Mario and I will be here every Tuesday evening, 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. We are going to put this back up. Mario, you and I have to go to the drawing board to see when we're going to be able to get this back into the rotation. But again, yeah. thank you guys so much for joining us live. Please like, share, and comment. Go in the comment section, guys, and let us know what are some things that you would like for us to cover. It could be something tonight. It could be some other things. The other thing, too, that I would appreciate if everyone would do is go over to the Real Perspectives TV show page and give, listen, like the page, leave us a comment there. Let us know what you think about tonight. And so, again, we wish everyone a, a blessed night. And thank you guys so much. And we will see you guys next Tuesday. Have a great night.